So good evening, everyone, and welcome to our session two of uh, ASG Academic Cell Presentation uh, by Professor Ramzi Avesi, sir, on inverted ILM flap technique in macular hole surgery. What it gave us over the conventional ILM peeling. Uh, on the panel, we have Dr. Danishri Atra, ma'am, Dr. Mahesh Shanmugam, sir. Uh, Dr. Ulrich H. M. Spandu, sir, and Dr. Atul Dhawan. I am your moderator, Dr. Ganesh Pillay. To introduce Dr. Professor Ramzi, sir, uh, Dr. Professor Ramzi, sir, is the head and the founder of Retina Eye Hospital, Bursa, Turkey. He graduated from Uldog University Faculty of Medicine in 1986. After the residency period of ophthalmology at the Uldog University, he worked with Professor A.F. Dutman in Nijmegen University for two years and completed his clinical fellowship in retina diseases. Then he founded Victor Retina Surgery Unit at the Department of Optometry, Uldag University uh, Medical School, and he worked at the same clinic for 25 years. He was assigned as a professor uh, in 2002 and still works in the field of vitro retina and medical retina in Retina Eye Hospital, Bursa, Turkey. He has served as an invited speaker on mitral surgery in international meetings. He is a member of many national and international societies, including ASCRS, uh, uh, AAO, U Retina, and the club, Julius Gorin. To introduce uh, our panelist, Dr. Dhanushri Matra, ma'am. She needs no introduction in India. Dr. Dhanushri Ratra Ma'am received her MS uh, from Nagpur University in 1993. And after her DNB from NB in 1994, she was a Vitro Retinal Fellow at Medical Research Foundation uh, and uh, worked as a Vitro Retina Consultant in 1996. She received the Best Lady Fellow Award for the year. In the 1999, she became a Fellow of uh, Royal College of Surgeons in Edinburgh. Uh, Dr. Dhanushri Ratra has peer-reviewed articles in international and national journals and chapters in various books. In 1996, she was appointed to establish and stabilize the Vitro Retina Surgery in Department in Sri Ganpati Netralai Jalna. In 2003, she was again chosen to create an hospital uh, at Rotary Narayan ne uh, Shankar Netralai in Kolkata, which she managed till July 2005. She also served as a specialist in Apollo Hospital in Colombo. Currently, she is a senior Vitro Retina consultant at Shankara Netralaya Chennai. Uh, our uh, very own Dr. P. Mahesh Sanugam, sir, is a renowned person in India. Uh, Dr. P. Mahesh Sanugam, sir, is currently working as a head of Vitro Retina services across all Shankara Eye Hospitals and Ocular Oncology services in Shankara Eye Hospital, Bangalore. His interests are medical, surgical retina, vitro retina surgery, ocular oncology, pediatric retinal surgery, including ROP. He has more than 150 articles in peer reviewed journals. He co-founded co Retnet India and has won many awards, including the Colonel Rangachari, Shiva Reddy Orations, uh, Swarnalata, Punshi Best Research Paper Award, MG Binde Memorial Award, and uh, Samar Kumar Biswas Award, to name few of them. He has presented in various national and international conferences and has been training fellows since 1993. Uh, we have also Dr. Ritz H. M. Spando, uh, who is an MD, PhD, and is currently working as a professor in the Department of Ophthalmology, University of Upasla, Sweden. After graduating in medicine from University of Würzburg, Germany, Dr. Spando completed residencies in the Department of Ophthalmology at University of Hiddelberg and University of Mannheim, Middelburg, and surgical training at Eye Clinic, Koblenge, uh, Germany. He became an accredited specialist in 2003 in ophthalmology. In 2006, he was appointed vice director of Department of Ophthalmology at University of Mannheim, Middelburg. And since 2008, he has been attending surgeon and head of ocular oncology uh, surgery at uh, Department of Ophthalmology, Hospital Upasla. He is the author of more than 50 articles in peer review journal and has many books to his name as well. And our very own Dr. Atul Dhawan, uh, after completing his MS from MLN Medical College, did his Vitro Retina Fellowship at Dr. Agrawal's Chennai and worked as a senior Vitro Retina Consultant at Dr. Agrawal's till 2022. He is presented and attended various national and international conferences, started our 
through which we connect uh, each other uh, across the globe has interest in macular surgeries also is a reviewer for AIS currently is working as a senior vitreoretinal consultant at ASGI Hospital Kanpur uh, Dr. Uh, can you share your slide please now okay Thank you. So, so Dr. Ramsey okay. has done lots of work on inverted island flap technique uh, and will be sharing his wonderful presentation. Uh, Dr. Ramsey, you can start. Thank you. Thanks a lot for this kind invitation. I would like to thank ASG Hospital and also Dr. Atul for this invitation. And today I will speak all the details of inverted flap technique. And uh, since I use this technique more than maybe 10 years. So these are my financial disclosure, but none of them are related with the content of this presentation. As you know, 360 ILM pedaling is currently considered as a gold standard treatment of macular hole surgery with more than 90% uh, success rate. However, results of this classic technique is um, uh, it's not as encouraging in challenging case. What is challenging case? Especially large macular holes, chronic macular hole, recurrent case, myopic case, traumatic and pediatric uh, patients. This classic technique in this group of patients, the success rate is less than 50%, anatomic success rate and factual results even worse. So during the, the last 20 years, several techniques have been published to treat these uh, challenging cases. And some of them are became more popular, such as autolox retinal uh, thrombosis concentrate, and inverted IF lab technique, and very recently, autolox retinal transplantation and amgen membrane graft uh, became uh, popular. However, in all of this technique, except inverted IM lab, we obtained improved anatomic results, but not parallel recovery in visual function. So, inverted flap technique, you know, is uh, first uh, described by Michalesko et al., uh, by Sofia, in 2010 as a classical multi layer 360 ILM uh, flap. And then different modifications have been published, such as insertion of ILM into the whole space, as you see in these pictures, and also recently single layer inverted lab from different direction have been published and temporal inverted lab technique became more widely accepted. So uh, Chen et al. reported the meta-analysis of four randomized control trials for large macular holes and in total of 141 ILM peeling group and 135 in inverted lab group and they published, uh, uh, reported a significant better anatomic closure rate in inverted lab technique and higher, uh, significantly higher type one closure rate uh, and also better possibility of visual acuity in inverted lab technique. So it, this, uh, after treatment of this patient with inverted lab technique, we obtained almost normal macular configuration, as you see here. It's hardly possible to differentiate which eyes had operation before we comparing the fellow eye of these patients and vision also improved significantly. So uh, in my technique, they have some small difference I would like to show you in a video. So I use small bubble of PFO to close the macular hole to contact the eye a bare uh, RP then, uh, I create a temporal crescent ILM, uh, then uh, peel the temporal crescent, then invert ILM as a single piece and all the macular hole area, then use a large bubble of PFO to keep it as a single layer and also to provide temporary attachment during peeling exchange. And we compare our results with conventional ILM peeling and temporal inverted plate and publish the result in European journals. And what we found in our studies, and the whole closure rate was better, 100% uh, and better in inverted flap technique, but not significant. And best corrected visual results also was better inverted flap uh, technique. And uh, also evaluate the macular hole closure uh, patterns. As you know, in large macular hole with classic ILM peeling, 360 ILM peeling, we usually observe uh, some patient flat open closing. 
And uh, in our study, uh, the type one closure pattern was 100% um, in inverted lab technique. And however, in uh, standard ILM peeling techniques, almost one third of the patient had flat uh, open closures. So also complete restoration of ellipsoid zone uh, was significantly better in inverted lab technique. And also restoration of ellipsoid external limiting membrane was also uh, better in uh, inverted lab technique. We also evaluate uh, retinal dimples uh, in our uh, cases. We observe these dimples as a notch on the B scan OCT, as you see here. And usually uh, we observe this in M-phase OCT as a dark spot on the ILM peeling area. So uh, this is also a flap uh, of the patients. So we evaluate uh, also the results and, uh, of, of these dimples and also publish this uh, recently. And in all of the eyes, exhibit the retinal dimples appearance on the M phase OCT. So there is no single eyes at which had no retinal dimples in all of the eyes, more or less, and so than uh, less. And we observe uh, these uh, dimples. It starts usually three weeks after surgery and uh, increase until six months after surgery. But in all cases, we observe this retinal dimples. And all dimples were in the same direction of optic nerve fibers. And therefore, we call this optic nerve uh, fiber dissociations. However, uh, the, fortunately, the negative, there was no negative effect on functional results of these dimples. So the mean diameter of the dimples in our study was about 209 micron, and the maximum depth was 14. Then all uh, the dimples was within the nerve fiber layer, and no, none of the dimples was uh, crossed to the ganglion stand layers. And also MPES OCT is the best technique to describe that the dimples and the results uh, was better comparing to multicolor blue reflectance. So uh, in our study, in all eyes, uh, the ILM lab was covering the macular hole uh, area. And also uh, the flap regularity uh, was, or we evaluated the flap regularity as smooth flap as you see here, as a wrinkling of the flap and also folded flap. We observe folded flap only in one eye. As you see here, the flap is folding, not a single layer uh, immersions. But usually the wrinkling is because of the proliferation of uh, epiretinal proliferation on the edge of the flap. You observe it's not over the flap. Usually we observe proliferation on the edge of the flap. And this may cause red uh, flap wrinkling. This is not possible to see this with uh, color on those blue, uh, multicolor, uh, uh, or the other picture uh, imaging method. We only see these wrinklings uh, with MPhase or CT. So, in case of fade macular surgery, this imaging technique is very helpful to uh, determine ILF flap comorbidation, also whether ILM has been peeled for reoperation plans. So this technique gives another advantage of us uh, for patient and surgeon to do another surgery in failed case. And for example, this patient that we operate this patient during the life surgery in Istanbul uh, two years ago. And but after surgery, the hole was not closed because the patient didn't keep face down position immediately after surgery. Then when we apply the second surgery, we observe that the flap is on the original position and we remove the flap and cover the macular hole area and do the same procedure and uh, keep the patient face down position immediately after surgery. And this is the pre-op pictures. And two weeks after surgery, you can see hole start to close and the island breach you can see. And um, 12 weeks after surgery, hole is closed with little uh, gap in the uh, 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 external uh, outer layers and vision acuity improve. What we observe in this patient on second operations, the temporal uh, field area was a little larger than the pre previous uh, surgery. There was a little contraction of ILM through the whole area. So this is the other case, a second case of a failed in my series, and I operate more than 200 case with this technique. And I have only two cases with uh, unsuccessful uh, cases, and this is the second one. And both of these patients had 
uh, not keep pace down position immediately after surgery, and therefore we observe this complication. So this patient came to visit uh, several uh, months ago, and we apply surgery uh, as a standard technique with not recently, I used a larger bubble of PFO to not stay in the inner surface of ILM. And then uh, peel uh, uh, temporal inverted flap and cover the macular wall uh, area and use again PFO bubble to keep it as a single layer uh, and also provide temporary attachment during fluid area exchange. And after a, a week after surgery, what we observe and the island flap was uh, floating on the vitreous and the hole was not closed, but the patient did not give pace down positions. Uh, we usually we, uh, apply air chamber, not gas. So wait a, we wait a week more to uh, give a chance, a spontaneous closure maybe, but it was not closed and hole is enlarged. And we try to apply, decide to apply the second surgery. And in the second surgery, we do the same things. After staining of uh, ILM, as you see, this straight line shows the area of the inverted flap is on the vitreous, floating on the vitreous is a straight line. And then we remove the dye. As you see, the flap is not covered the macular hole area. And uh, then we do the same things, a uh, little more peel and cover the macular hole area. Again, use a large bubble to keep it as a single layer because I pay attention to keep the flap as a single layer, not insert into the uh, whole area. So this is a week after second surgery. As you see, the hole is closed, vision improved. Everything is okay, but three weeks later, three weeks later, when the patient comes, so this is the emphase OCT, this ILM peeling area is in the flap area, but three weeks later, when the patient comes, this macular hole is open again, and ILM is on the, again on the vitreous cavity is floating. So this is strange. And first time I observed this in my series and after closing call with the emerge flap technique, it's uh, open again. And uh, we decided another surgery, but in this surgery, we do not uh, uh, apply the same technique. We uh, peel ILM 360 and a uh, multi-layer immersion technique we apply, as you see, after uh, the staining against the floating ILM flap, and we peel the ILM 360 degree, and like a insertion technique or multi-layer inverted flap technique as originally described. And after peeling, and we made a little trim, uh, the get short on the ILM flap, and then uh, live fluid air exchange. And this is a week after a week after surgery. You see, hole is closed, vision improved. But as you see, the morphology is not as good as single layer inverted flap technique, because the ILM into the hole, ILM layer into the hole may prevent this uh, regeneration and glial proliferation uh, regularly. So, and this is the third case, but this is not my case. This patient came from another center after. Uh, unsuccessful macular hole surgery, but we did not have any information about the details and which kind of surgery had been done. And when we uh, apply and phase OCT, we observe the ILM peeling area with looking at the dimples and and uh, and the superior nasal part is uh, ILM was closed to hole, and we decided to create another inverted flap from superior nasal part and cover the macular hole again. And after staining of this um, area, as exactly we observe the same things that ILM peeling area is not peeled, and we apply uh, inverted flap again and cover the macular hole. And this is three weeks after surgery, hole is completely closed, vision improved 2040. And this is the uh, emphase OCD. You can see it's ILM flap, it's uh, smooth, uh, single layer uh, immersions. This is pre and post post and geography. You can see for the foveal avascular zone became a normal position. So even in a success, unsuccessful case with previous 36 ILM peeling, and uh, if the ILM peeling are small and we can successfully use this technique and as a second procedures. So also we apply this technique in different indication. This is a proliferative diabetic patient with type one diabetes, only one eye, the other eye is already lost because of the 
severe diabetes. And uh, there is a large macular hole. As you see, there is some proliferation of there also. But we did not take care about this proliferation. After cutting this membrane, we apply the standard technique and stay in the uh, IRM. And then, as you see, only temporal crescent area is stained and create a temporal uh, IRM bidding and also invert IRM or the macular hole area with us, our standard. Then peel the membranes and remove it, apply laser and fluid air exchange in this patient. This is four weeks after surgery, still the gas in the vitreous cavity and hole is completely closed, vision improved to 2060. This is another patient with complicated retinal detachment and PVR, and there's a, there's a very large macular hole uh, on the macular area. It's a kind of macular tear, uh, we didn't decide exactly. So there's some sort of proliferation on the vitreous space, also on the uh, posterior pole. After the removing of the, all the membrane, we uh, attach the retina with fluid air exchange with aspirating supretinal fluid from the large hole. Then uh, apply PFO to close the macular hole to prevent the uh, passing uh, dye into the spritna space. Then first remove epiretinal membrane and then uh, create temporal inverted flap and cover the macular hole area. The hole was almost 1,000 micron, maybe larger than 1,000 micron. And after this uh, technique, we apply silicone oil and uh, apply the laser also because there was a large area of retinectomy in the inferior in the previous surgery. So this is the first week after surgery. You can see all is flat, open, closed. This is third week after a uh, siliconoid tamponade and hole is closed and vision improved on And This is four months after silicone oil removal. As you see, hole is completely closed, but not significant visual improvements. So the other advantage of inverted flap technique is uh, uh, less foveal displacement and minimum metamorphopsia we observe. As you know, foveal displacement is towards the optic disc and minimum morphopsia after 360 ILM peeling surgery we usually observe. And this uh, displacement increased parallel to the white of the area where ILM is peeled off. And also foveal displacement is related to the postoperative metamorphopsia. There are many several studies which show this complication. So we also evaluate our patients with these uh, complications, and we observed that foveal displacement and metamorphopsia was significantly lower in the temporal inverted lab group compared with conventional ILM peeling group. So the less ILM peeling, the less foveal displacement means less metamorphopsia after surgery. So uh, is there any complication with this technique? There's a few complications. One of these patients, and the patient, as you see, is not large macular hole, but I apply this technique as a standard procedure in all macular hole surgery and apply this standard inverted flap technique after a large uh, bubble of PFO only uh, stay in the temporal crescent area and create a flap and cover the macular hole and use a large bubble of PFO to keep it as a single layer. Also, this provide temporary attachment of the ILF flap during this fluid air exchange. And this is a week after surgery. You see the macular hole is completely closed, but there's a complication. There's a PFO bubble under ILM flap. It's not supraretinal, sub ILM flap PFO bubble. This is uh, actually new definition after our technique. So the patient had metamorphopsia. Vision was okay, but uh, because of the metamorphopsia, we decided to reoperate of this patient. This is ILM flap and PESO CT, you can see it's perfectly a uh, layer, but one uh, age of the ILM flap is rolled over. So uh, what we did, we uh, stained the ILM flap, then open the flap and remove uh, PFO with 41 gauge candida. As you see, we can see the ILM flap. When we use forceps to uh, open it, it was no, there was no strong adhesion. There was very weak adhesion, and it was very easy to open the ILM flap, but it was difficult to keep it open. And therefore, I used PFO to keep it open, then uh, used 41 gauge cannula to remove this small uh, bubble uh, uh, PFO. And it's not uh, easy because you need a very stable hand because there's some 
uh, proliferation of the around the bubble and it's not uh, come together with the large PFO bubble. So, and after that, we remove all the PFO and pre invert ILM again, but pay attention to not to leave another uh, a piece of PFO under ILM flap. So, this is again a week after surgery, vision again improved, the hole is closed, and there is no metamorphopsia in this patient. This is just four days after surgery, you can see the half of the vitro is still air. And I mentioned I use air in uh, my macular hole patient, not uh, gas anymore. So uh, the other complications that we observe cystoid change in neurosensory retina uh, several months after surgery in this statement. For example, this patient, before a month after surgery, you see perfect complete uh, closure of macular hole, but six months after surgery, we observe some cystoid change on the uh, neurosensory retina. Another patient with before and first month after surgery, again, six months, we, we observe some cystoid change. Another patient, a first month after surgery, we observe that open closure of these patients, but six months after surgery, we observe significant macular, uh, cystoid macular edema with uh, ILM, uh, is also elevating ILM flat. So, uh, we assume that this may cause because of dye toxicity, and therefore we change our technique. This is our conventional ILM staining technique. We use a small bubble of PFO just to close the whole area, but with this modified technique, we use now large bubble of PFO and not to stain the inner surface ILM, which will be invert, only we stain the temporal crescent area where the ILM uh, peeling is start. So uh, let me show this with this uh, video. And uh, as you see, and uh, again, the same uh, procedures. I will show many times, but always standard procedure use PFO bubble to keep it as a single layer. So this is after surgery, as you see, perfect macular configuration. Also, you can see ILM flap is a smooth single layer immersions. So we compare our uh, two, uh, both uh, techniques results uh, in our uh, studies. And in both groups, the closure rate was 100%. And however, in uh, while we observe a uh, focal area of RP atrophy and associate macular edema in three out of 14 eyes in a uh, standard ILM staining technique, but in new technique, we didn't observe this complication. We are not sure it's because of the dye toxicity, because brilliant blue is quite a safe dye, but sometimes it will use dual blue. But uh, unlike the 360 ILM peeling, in inverted flap technique, the stain ILM remains on the macular hole area, causing long term contact of the dye with neurosensory retina and IP. And we assume that this might cause uh, dye toxicity in long term period, because we observe this complication usually uh, several months after surgery. So what's the possible mechanism? Why inverted lab technique provide us more uh, better anatomic and functional results? Because it's more physiologic and provide more regular structure for glial proliferations. And ILM flap act as a watertight barrier. When it covers the macular hole area, it separates vitreous space from the macular hole space. And it provides a silence a, uh, space on the macular hole area. And this uh, really, uh, provide a good uh, glial proliferation and regeneration of the retinal structures. So also it provides relatively scaffold determines the front limit of glial proliferation underneath. And also furthermore, neurotrophic factors and BFGF produced by activated Miller cells on the surface of ILM may contribute to macular hole closures. So uh, as you know, the widely accepted old theories that the ILM peeling increased the closure rate of macular holes by relieving tangential tractions on the fovea. However, this uh, theory might become questionable and maybe may need to be revised because in inverted lab technique, we did not release tangential traction, but we obtained better anatomic and functional results. So in conclusion, inverted lab technique achieved improved anatomic and functional results for large macular holes, and it minimized the risk of iatrogenic trauma to the nasal part of the fovea and corresponding papillomacular bundle fibers. It minimized the risk of foveal displacement and metamorphopsia. And in case of failure, it provides an ad ad advantage by giving second chance both patient and surgeon uh, in the same conditions. 
and it should be considered that all of because of all of this reason it should be considered as the first option in the treatment of naive large macular holes maybe even in all macular holes as i told you this technique became uh, as a standard procedure of my uh, technique in all macular holes so thank you for your attention thank you Dr. Ramsey, for your wonderful presentation and illustration and videos, uh, amazing uh, videos to be seen over here. Uh, we have uh, our panelist, Dr. Dhanashi Rathram, ma'am. Uh, if you can comment uh, on the presentation, please, ma'am. Thank you. Just a second. Dr. Dhanashree Ratra, ma'am. Yeah, just a second. I'll mute. Meanwhile, uh, there are a few questions, sir, you can uh, read on the chat part. Mm -hmm. Okay. We think you use if you can put lap tears during making that. So, uh, which technique? The question is, which technique uh, do you use if temporal flap tears during making flap? So, if it tears, but it's not really uh, happening in my hand, but if it's tear, you can use the other direction, not temporal, maybe superior inverted that you can apply because you have another area still ILM is there. So, the other questions are there chance of ILM flap? aspirating while removing the PFCL bubble? Um, not really. And uh, usually during the end of air fluid exchange, first, I pay attention to dry in the vitreous cavity with completely feeling, uh, aspirating the fluid first, then a PFO bubble. And during this aspiration of PFO bubble, I uh, bend the eye, position of the eye through the nasal part of the patient and then uh, the uh, PFO bubble come to the uh, optic nerve area and I can easily remove it. So I did not have this complication uh, as you mentioned. Uh, yeah, Dr. Dhanishri Ratra, ma'am, uh, any comments? Please? Yeah, thank you for unmuting me. And that was a wonderful uh, talk, Dr. Ramsey. I must uh, congratulate you. Very nice talk and wonderful uh, surgical videos. So very impressed, yeah. especially with your on, on fast OCT images. And you have shown this uh, dimpling of the inner layer so well. Uh, I, I observed from your surgical videos that the, the amount of island peeling that you are doing is very less, very small. So normally what is uh, taught to us during the fellowship is that you should do from arcade to arcade island peeling. And there are some people who do a large uh, ILM peeling. So I, I don't personally believe in that, but I can see that you have done a small ILM peeling and it has shown you good results. So what is your rationale in uh, doing a less amount of uh, ILM peeling? So uh, as I mentioned, so the uh, larger uh, ILM peeling area, the more displacement and the more metamorphopsia that from several studies show this. And uh, it's also is not necessary. So in a very small, even if a small, very small piece of ILM, if it's covered the macular hole area, is enough to close the macular hole. We don't need to uh, apply a large area of ILM peeling in this patient. So again, you, uh, as you mentioned, and we observe retinal uh, dimplings in the ILM peeling area, and this, uh, the maximum depth is about 14 microns. So uh, there was no functional difference, but um, I think this is not really safe, uh, looks not really safe technique to peel a large area of ILM. So we need to peel ILM to close the macular hole. We need to invert it. That's okay. But if we, we can do this only that we need uh, the smallest uh, area as possible. And, um, and now first we start to as a large area of ILM peeling, but recently we changed again our technique is very, a large bubble PFO and it's very small area of uh, inversions of IA, ILM is that we peel. So actually, I don't think that we need a large area of ILM peel. Very nice. And uh, regarding, uh, I just wanted to ask you, 
uh, if if the case uh, say you have not done the first surgery but somebody else has done the first surgery and you do not know how much ilm has been peeled or what has been done or supposing you find that there is no ilm to peel then what is your option in such a situation uh, in a recurrent uh, case you know failed hole if there is no ilm to peel at all sorry i couldn't catch the question could you please repeat it again yeah uh, if you are if you come across a failed uh, case of macular hole uh, say which has been done but done by somebody else and you find that there is no ilm left around the hole to peel so what is yeah. your next option if there is no ilm yeah How do you... so uh, if but as i show you if the ilm is the ilm peeling area is not large and it's some area is close to holes there's still ilm i can again apply this uh, inverted flap techniques uh, and cover the macular hole area but if it's in a, a large area of ilm is peeled i usually prefer free ilm flap uh, and insert ilm into the macular hole area because there is no other way or you can use another uh, uh, peeling materials such as um, uh, amnion membrane or autologretinal strand plants in large macular holes or the thrombus concentrate but uh, ilm is always there and therefore i use free ilm and insert ilm into the hole and it also uh, provide a good results but usually in this insertion technique we did not uh, observe uh, good morphology on the closing area we observe irregular closure closing of the macular hole because of the ilm layers into the hole prevent uh, smooth uh, regeneration and proliferation of glial tissue on the macular hole area thank you uh, Dr. Mahesh Shanmugam, sir, uh, uh, is on panel with us. Uh, Dr. Mahesh Shanmugam, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Ramzi, for a wonderful lecture and a beautiful video as uh, ever. Uh, I do do inverse flap, but then like not all the time, but temporal flap. So in your case number one, there was a small rim of unstained area around the hole. And in, in such cases where there is possibly an ERM around the hole, and if you do just a temporal flap, is it adequate enough to close the hole? Mm -hmm. So um, this is a uh, common question you usually ask me. Uh, if there is uh, REM, a retinal proliferation, can be a creative problem. Actually, um, I do not pay attention to remove a retinal membrane. If there is if there's not significant membranes, if there is uh, only a small area of unstained area that we uh, observe that it's uh, a retinal proliferation, you should not pay attention to peel this retinal membrane. I invert ILM over this uh, retinal membrane, and usually I did not observe severe proliferation or other problems in these patients. But if there is severe retinal membrane, we should first remove the retinal membrane and then use uh, ILM again as an inverted flap or in other techniques. No, I'm not talking and, about the regular epithelial membrane. If you see in your case number one, there is a circumferential area which is unstained around the hole. So that's yes. usually a, a little yeah. bit of an epithelial membrane around the edge of the hole. So I'm a little concerned if that will not allow the nasal edge of the hole to close. That's, but of course, in your cases, it did close. But like that's that's the reason why I uh, do peel all around rather than just a temporal flap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, actually, oh, this is the first case you mentioned. Uh, I think there was. This is not the first case. The failed case you mentioned that the unstained area, but this area is already ILM peeled area. You mentioned the same that case or the. Your case number one. Actually, case number, number one, one, if you see, yeah, there is one circumferential area which is not stained just around the hole. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I did not notice that one, but in the not with the first case number one, we obtained a uh, operate aid vision uh, after surgery and very, very nice macular configuration. So, but um, Maybe uh, I, mean, I, 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 I may look again, but uh, I don't think that it's uh, important and uh, we could apply this uh, technique again. Sure, thank you. 
Dr. Ulrich Pando. He is a panelist uh, here. Sir, so your uh, thoughts on the presentation and the overall procedure. I think it's unmute. I couldn't hear him. Uh, Dr. Ulrich, we cannot hear you. Not, not yeah, able to hear you. Meanwhile, Dr. Atul, uh, your comments on the presentation and the overall. Uh, uh, yeah, Dr. Ramsey, it's a great presentation, great videos. Uh, I would just like to ask one question, sir. Uh, yeah. Dr. Atul Lavan is saying something. I think he is not audible. He is also not uh, audible. No, no, I, I'm. Hello? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're able. I'm, I'm hearing, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. MC, you are saying that in all the cases you are doing the inverted island flap technique. Yes. And uh, okay. okay. Most of us, uh, we are doing only the simple classical 360 degree ILM peeling. Uh, Dr. Ganesh, I feel we can take questions from the chat box. Hello? Uh, Dr. Mike, uh, we can hear uh, Dr. Arthur. Hello, hello? Yeah, uh, hello? Uh, okay, uh, I'm here. If, yeah. If, uh, for a small hole less than 400 or 500 micron, after the 360 degree alum peeling, most of us are getting 100% closer. So why you have chosen, why, why you have shifted from classical ILM peeling technique to in temporal inverted ILM, ILM peeling technique in a small, less than 400 micron or less than 500 micron holes? What, 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 is the, what is the reason? Because you must be getting 100% closer rate with the classical technique also. Uh, okay, you're right, Atul. Yeah, in the in small cave uh, holes and classic technique is really works perfectly, but uh, not in all hand is hundred percent success rate, and we can sometimes we can give some failed case. So in macular hole surgery, the failed case is really uh, really getting difficulties if you peel all three sixty ILM, but. Um, and also this technique became, in my hand, this became a standardized technique. It's very, I optimized this technique in my hand and therefore uh, to be able to give another chance, uh, the success uh, rate is so high with classic technique. Uh, in failed case, to be able to give another chance to patients and I apply this as a regular standard procedure at all. But this is, uh, this is in my hand. Uh, you write in standard technique also uh, had a very good success rate, but sometimes you don't understand. In some patients, you can see a recurrence of a ball or a failed case, but this gives another chance. Uh, because what I have found with my experience, the closer with the classical technique, 360 degree ILM peeling technique, the closer is much more towards the normal much more towards the normal itself. And uh, if you're doing the inverted ILM flap, uh, flap technique, as Shiyode showed in the monkey uh, uh, that uh, experiment, there is a formation of a barrier and then a migration of molar cell and then normalization of the macula. Slight here and there is there. So uh, for me uh, personally, 400 or 500 micron, not. 400 also, my cutoff is 5, 550. If less than 550 is there, I'll go with a 360 degree conventional and more than 550, then I'll go with the this temporal ILM, ILM flap. And uh, you you can tell, uh, this this is my uh, inference in the last uh, seven, eight years. I understand. So, uh, okay, this is, this, is, this, is, this is the way uh, we know. Uh, uh, again, uh, you know, the foveal uh, displacement and metamorphosis and other uh, problem recently published uh, several studies. And also, maybe this uh, may reduce these complications. Uh, but even uh, if somebody say that I use standard technique in a large, small macular holes, okay. But in my hand, I, uh, it became a standard procedures in all cases. Okay, the, the second uh, thing is, the, the second thing, oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, continue, please. 
uh, also uh, we uh, in our study we observe a better morphologic recovery with single layer inverted technique even better than 360 better than multi layer better than insertion technique and I think it's the uh, single layer YLM over the macular hole. It's really uh, separate the whole space from the vitreous space and it provides vitreous free medium. And this provides a uh, very uh, smooth and uh, uh, standard glial proliferation regenerations. And uh, the morphology of the macular after uh, this uh, technique, it's uh, in our experience is better than uh, 360 classic ILM peeling technique. Okay, the, the second question I want to ask, what is, what is the reason you have found in your that flap displacement case? What was the reason? You have used the air and uh, you have done the uh, fluid air exchange. The patient has not maintained the position, but uh, 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 that means, uh, Will you go with the SF6 for in this type of case in which the patient will not uh, uh, go with the same position face down proper? Uh -huh. um, during the last two, three years, I stopped to use gas and I use air and keep face down position only three days after surgery in this patient. Uh, you mentioned about the foveal displacement. Is that? No, uh, ILM displacement. One case, ILM displacement was there. Uh -huh, yeah. I have only two cases. This ILM uh, was displacement after surgery. And one is was live surgery case. It was under general anesthesia. And uh, it's, uh, it was not possible to keep the patient face down position immediately after surgery. And this was the first failed case in my series. And... Uh, Usually I apply the surgery in local anesthesia, not in general anesthesia. And even uh, after just after the surgery and at the end of surgery, I immediately bend the eye through the nasal part and to keep the macular hole area dry during uh, the finish, the last drop of the uh, eyes. So uh, then I uh, face down the patient uh, on the operating table and send the room uh, on the face down position. So. In general anesthesia, it's not possible to do this, but in local anesthesia, you can manage this. So in this technique, it's mandatory to keep patient face down position immediately after surgery and the second patients. And we uh, apply this technique as a standard procedure, but at the patient, when he uh, go uh, uh, room, he went to room, uh, he uh, lay down face up position because of his chest uh, a, uh, problems and therefore uh, the second patient was again the same re reason because it's we didn't keep it a face down position immediately after surgery there's only two cases and the reason is clear and except these two cases i have no another failed case with this technique uh, i think five six years back when i have started this technique uh, one day i found out that uh, after the fluid air exchange I was preparing the gas and when I, it took almost two, three minutes to prepare the gas because of some reason. Then I went inside the uh, cavity and I have seen again the fluid was there and yeah. the flap, flap, flap was exactly not at the same place. So from that time, what I am doing that uh, I, I'm at the time of fluid air exchange, I am there with the silicon tip cannula at least for two to three minutes to take out the last drop of uh, saline to make the this uh, cavity totally water-free. And uh, by, by after that, uh, I don't have any uh, flap displacement. So uh, this is also a, a simple thing to do uh, uh, from my hand. Yeah, so yeah. I agree, uh, actually, I agree with you. So, uh, but um, in this, in, in my technique, uh, usually I don't use gas, but even if I, uh, when, when I was using gas, I prepare gas before uh, to, uh, 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 and earlier, and then uh, after fluid air exchange, I completely dry the whole area. So it's not possible to keep it completely dry. If you wait a few minutes, again, the fluid come there. And therefore, uh, after drying the whole area uh, on the posterior pole, I tilt the patient's position, uh, the head is through the nasal part. 
So even the fluid is accumulated, it accumulated on the nasal part, not on the macular area. So when you look at the uh, vitreous and you can see the flap is original uh, in the correct position and the fluid is accumulated nasal. So then uh, usually I used 27 gauge uh, trocker system and they never need a suturings. And, and after these positions, I immediately remove trockers like, like maybe in a, in a minute and then keep the patient face down. So, and uh, if uh, the tilt the head of the patient through the nasal immediately after surgery, after getting a uh, dry the uh, posterior pole, so you don't uh, have, will have this uh, problem at all. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you. You are calm. Well, I want to just uh, to, uh, report about my uh, technique. I'm one of the few people using classical technique. And uh, I disagree actually with the numbers you showed in the beginning of your talk, uh, saying that 72% is uh, only closure in the classical technique. I reviewed my data about over 10 years surgery and I have a 94% closure with the classical technique. Um, if you the whole- in large macular hole? In large macular hole. Yes. Yeah. It, all holes I had, everything I had. And if there was a, if the hole, hole reopened, I put gas inside, SF6 inside, and it was closed. So um, um, I think uh, the results you compared, there were very small numbers, like 16 patients. So I think the numbers should be higher. Um, I also think it's difficult to understand that you have 100% closure with the flap technique because you always have failures. And 100%, I think it's actually biologically impossible. Um, but I think one point we always forget, we talk very much about classical against ILM flap technique. I thought it was very interesting, Dr. Afshi, what you mentioned, that you um, use air and not yeah. gas. I think this point is very much forgotten because um, this, I think, is very important you use air and you have a very high i don't know i assume it's over 90 percent at least closure rate with air and this is very good for the patient because the patient has a very short handicap um, with the gas because i use like always sf6 and this is three weeks handicap so this is i think a very important uh, point which you should this publish that you only use air and three mm -hmm. days head down yeah Okay, thank you. So, uh, as you mentioned, you know, air is really worked perfectly like gas. So, uh, I experienced why I did not uh, use air uh, three weeks uh, years ago, but now it's really perfectly uh, works. So, we don't need to keep face down more than three days, maybe maybe less than three days, but I at least keep the three days face down positions. So, the first part of your uh, common, uh, maybe I did not understand exactly, but in uh, the comparing the uh, these two uh, techniques uh, in large macular hole and the success rate was less uh, in uh, 360 ILM peelings. And also uh, the flat open closing rate was higher in 360 uh, ILM peeling groups, but in inverted flap group, and uh, we obtain 100% success rate. So I think it's clear or do you mention the same things? Uh, well, I had I, I looked at all my holes and had a primary close rate of ninety four percent with one surgery. Mm -hmm. In large macular holes. Well, this was ten years of surgery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so in some areas we observe very high success rate, but usually uh, uh, the success rate in large macular holes with classic technique is not mm -hmm. uh, so high and about 85, 90% uh, maybe success rate. But if we accept flat open closure as a success rate, so this is a, a, another a challenge point, another a controversial point, you know, flat open closure is not mean exactly closing of macular holes, but in large macular hole, we observe this uh, type of closure pattern in uh, with uh, 360 island pinning technique, but it's not in uh, inverted flap, inverted flap, when you keep the patients uh, after the inverse uh, island flap is closed, macular, 
and the uh, outer part of the uh, retina is closed uh, step by step over several months, sometimes with proliferation of glial tissue, and, and, and finally, and you can see that all the whole area is completely uh, filled with uh, retinal and glial tissues. It's not real. I mean, the not scar glial tissue is a, a glial cell proliferation. This is a kind of retina tissue, but uh, we do not observe this uh, flat open hole is closed completely after uh, several uh, a period of after surgery. So we observe this in emergency lab. This is another advantage of this technique. Dr. Danishi Ratraman, uh, you yeah. have a comment. Uh, yes, uh, so I have one comment about the interesting uh, thing which you showed where your patients uh, after closure of macular hole have developed cystoid macular edema. So yeah. uh, I also have a few cases where I have seen that after closure of macular hole patient has developed edema. But interestingly, I also saw this in a patient who refused uh, surgery, who I mean, or, or who was waiting for surgery, did not get the surgery done. But in his case also, there was a spontaneous closure of the macular hole with the formation of cystoid macular edema. So I looked at the literature and they have uh, published a spontaneous closure of macular hole with macular edema in uveitic conditions. Uh, but mm -hmm. I have not yet found any, uh, you know, uh, any, any literature pertaining to this particular uh, phenomena that you have noticed that after the closure of macular hole, patient has developed edema. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you are, your reasoning is that it, it could be because of the dye toxicity. Uh, but uh, I am not very sure. Maybe there is something else is also going on uh, because there is uh, there are patients who did not undergo surgery but still develop the same process. So probably something okay. else, some other inflammatory thing is going on. Uh, you can be right. So uh, when we publish the results of these studies and uh, we discuss uh, that we are not 100% sure it's because of the dye toxicity. Uh, but uh, we did not observe this complication in our patient with, with when we change our uh, technique uh, with less uh, stain on the temporal crescent stain area. Also, we did not observe this complication in our uh, standard ILM peeling technique, but you can be right. Uh, but in these three patients, um, and uh, we op op apply uh, the uh, acetazolamide uh, treatments uh, after uh, these complications and and two of them is uh, recover uh, after this treatment is perfectly uh, again but one still has cystoid edema and uh, we do not know uh, what we'll do will we do and we follow this patient only uh dr ramsey i had i had one question uh, which i uh, i frequently do inverted ilm peeling technique uh, surgeries. What is your average duration where you feel that the patient has uh, gained the best vision? Uh, is it three months, six months or a year? So I have few patients who don't immediately have a very great vision, but over a period of time, they do have good vision. But usually uh, the vision improve uh, like uh, several weeks after surgery. If it's not improved, we do not observe significant improvement on the long period of time. Yes, that's some progressions, but the most of the visual gain in our series, in our experience that we uh, obtain usually is several weeks after surgery, like three to four weeks after surgery. But then, yes, there's some, some small progression of the vision, but not so high. Hey, Dr. Ulrich, do you have a comment? Yes, I have one comment actually to your technique, Dr. Avci. Uh, you must have increased costs for your technique if you use PFO for every case. How much does it cost in your country? So, uh, yeah, PFO, but usually uh, we, uh, we operate this technique, uh, these patients, uh, not, we, we do not open one bottle PFO for each patients. Mm -hmm. And uh, in one operation days, uh, sometimes, uh, because for this patient, we need only a very small amount of PFO, not so uh, uh, many. And therefore, uh, we use PFO uh, in regularly. Yes, it uh, uh, increases the price of surgery. But uh, again, uh, I really pay attention to keep ILM as a single layer to uh, obtain uh, morphologically uh, normal macular configurations. 
we, we have one attached question to this. Uh, Dr. Nitesh Salunke has asked ki, if uh, there is an ILM flap aspiration while PFCL bubble removal, because we normally don't use PFCL bubble to reposit uh, the flap. So uh, in your experience, has it ever happened that uh, while removing the PFCL, you have inadvertently removed the flap as well? So in my experience, I already answered this question. I have no single case that I aspirate PF, uh, ILM during a PFO aspiration at the end of surgery because uh, ILM is not really, uh, because the connection of ILM, it's 180 degree, it's not uh, weak. So it's not easy to aspirate ILM, but I never touch ILM. I never go to the macular hole area with fluid needle during the end stage of surgery, aspiration during aspiration. As I mentioned, I tilt the patient's positions to the nasal and I aspirate everything on the optic nerve area, not on the macular hole area. I never touched the ILM. And therefore, I did not observe these complications in, in, in none of the patients. Right. So one more, the, how beautifully you were injecting the dye in the cavity. Uh, it is so yeah. smooth, it comes out very nicely. How is it done, Mane? How are you doing it? Because normally what we observe is by injecting the dye, there is a jet of dye which comes out rather yeah. than a very slow kind of a dye injection. Is there anything that you have a tip? Yeah, this is the other uh, point that I do not like to stain all area, area of, of the retina uh, with dye, it's unnecessary area. And usually I use 27 gauge and I no notice that turbulence in the vitreous cavity when the infusion is open, uh, the turbulence is much less with small gauge cannula comparing to 23, for example. If I uh, apply 23 gauge, the turbulence is really high. In that patient, I close the infusion during injection and aspiration. But if I use 27 gauge, I keep infusions open. There is no turbulence. And I uh, got close to the macular hole area and inject very uh, carefully, but I do not observe any turbulence in 27 gauge. But if it's 23, uh, I keep infusion closed during injection and aspiration. Uh, just to add one more question, sir, uh, you use air in your uh, cases, but in case of an inadvertent, uh, say, a brick somewhere uh, while PVD induction, so uh, do you change to gas or oil sometimes? Uh, not really, because the retina is usually uh, not detached, only there is some uh, tear, tear can be, and after uh, this complication, I apply laser and again, again use air. So we don't need gas in even in this patient because there's no detachment. Only if you release all the traction around the tear, so lasers and air will be enough to uh, attach this. And I don't use uh, gas uh, in, in even in these complications. Uh, Doctor Ulrich, you have a comment? Yes, sir, and you have uh, two more tips to your question to avoid the jet stream for the dye. Uh, what I used to do, I used to uh, refill um, the dye syringe to a different uh, 3cc syringe and then place a cannula on this. And this syringe is much easier uh, regarding the jet stream. So I would recommend to use a regular syringe to inject. There's a second tip, what you can do, you can use the same syringe and attaches to a child's fluid needle. And then with the child's fluid needle, you can press on, on, on the tubing and very small, um, very, uh, you can really control the injection of the dye onto the retina. Yeah. And Dr. Daneshi, ma'am? Uh, yeah, this, uh, regarding this dye injection, uh, so uh, we generally put the dye in a air filled dye after doing FG. Uh, that is because the the dye which we use in India is not heavier than water. The brilliant blue, the mm -hmm. dye which we use, so it tends to float in the water and it does not stain the ILM well. But uh, whereas if you are using the uh, dye which is available from Dork with membrane blue or one one more company, so this uh, this dye is actually made heavier than by water heavier than water by modification. So it is either you can mix 5% dextrose or you can mix, uh, mix uh, 
uh, PLG or something, I think. So the, so the dye is made, the specific gravity is higher than water. So the dye sinks into the fluid. So that's how it can, you know, float, float down and go and sit on the retina. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, the other tips which Dr. Spandau has mentioned. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Atul, you have a comment? No. Uh, Dr. Ramsey, uh, what went wrong in that case in which the uh, PFCL has gone inside the ILM flap? And yeah. how to prevent that? Yeah. So, um, so again, uh, at all, this complication I observed only in one patient, in one uh, case. Uh, it was not usual complications because um, usually when we invert ILM and then I inject PFO over the ILM flap and uh, and keep ILM uh, flap uh, as a temp. Uh, also, this the gravity of this PFO provide temporary attachment of ILM uh, during uh, the rest of the procedures, like several minutes. Uh, to prevent this, so I did not, uh, actually I did not have any explanation on this patient, how the PFO is stay uh, behind the uh, retina. I think it's because of the first uh, PFO bubble that I inject to not stay into a, in a surface. In that time, it's a small bubble uh, of PFO remain on the whole area. And I didn't notice that. Uh, therefore, uh, to prevent this complication, I think the first, uh, after the first injections uh, during staining of the uh, ILM, to remove, to pay attention to remove all PFO is important, not on the second injection in my checking. Yeah, uh, Dr. Ramsey, uh, does it give equally good results in uh, a myopic macular hole? Uh, any modification that you do while uh, inverting a flap in a myopic macular hole? Uh, yeah, myopic macular hole, as yours, the, uh, myopic macular hole is a really extremely difficult case. It's not uh, apply uh, optimized standard procedure in all myopic macular holes. It's not easy to uh, visualize ILM. It's not easy to peel ILM. So in myopic macular holes, I... Uh, try to apply this technique in most of the patient, but if it's uh, not uh, get success, and I uh, sometimes build 360, uh, but uh, and also in macular hole, apply this technique. If I manage to do this technique in macular hole, it gives a really good results also, but it's not possible to do this in all cases in my epic holes. Right. So uh, there is one question by Dr. Jignesh Gosai. Uh, why not the nasal flap? Uh, will it give a similar kind of a result uh, rather than a temporal flap? Any disadvantages that you foresee? Oh, yeah. So nasal, nasal flap is another technique that is uh, on the, published on the literature, but uh, I do not uh, want to touch the papillomacular bundle area uh, in this surgery. And I always try to uh, away from this area to not to damage the ILM. Uh, the, the retinal fiber layers and the others, because during the peeling also, you maybe we can make some mechanic damage. Also, the dimples, the situation of the retinal fiber layer that what will uh, happen in the, the long term period, we don't know exactly. And therefore, I do not uh, want to touch the papillomacular bundle, but uh, I think anatomically it works like temporal flap also. Yes, sir. Uh, so does the chronicity of macular hole, does it make any difference? Uh, do you decide uh, you are using air for every case that you have already not, told? Yeah, but, not uh, really. Even in chronic macular hole, I use air in, in all cases. Uh, as I show you on my video, uh, when we, uh, in this complicated case, when we uh, ma managed to open the uh, ILM uh, flap, the attachment was not so strong. I think in all ILM flap, if we would go the second times in successful case, we can open the ILM, reopen the ILM flap easily. The adhesion is not so strong. There is no severe proliferation uh, above and around ILM flap. Uh, and um, uh, therefore, um, I think um, we can. Uh, apply this uh, technique in all chronic case also the air not we don't need to long term face down position even on chronic case 
uh, therefore, I do not uh, change technique. It's the standard technique I apply in all cases. Yeah, so Dr. Pawan Puneet asks uh, on the chat that what is the extent of uh, parietal vitreous that you shave or cut? Uh, do you believe in doing extensive vitrectomy for your macular holes? I do not apply extensive vitrectomy. I only apply a core vitrectomy, posterior hyaluronic removal if there is attached. And uh, do vitrectomy with uh, tilting of a different direction, but no indentation. Uh, and I do not, I don't believe that extensive uh, vitrectomy will be, is necessary in these patients. Right, sir. And what is the role of uh, perfluoro uh, oil uh, bubble before staining? Is there, does that, that give any advantage? We have in one case we have put uh, PFO even before staining. No, uh, before staining mean uh, before staining I inject PFO on the posterior pole, then I give dye, and the aim of this PFO giving uh, before staining is to prevent the staining of inner surface of ILM, which will be emerge, and uh, not trap die and the, under the ILM flap and uh, bear uh, contact with bear RP on the macular hole area. And therefore I use uh, PFO at the first, at the beginning of the first step of surgery. On the second uh, the step, uh, after a peeling of ILM, I keep pay attention to uh, invert ILM as a single layer. If it's not a single layer, it may uh, come and uh, fold it and it may go into the hole and also again prevent a uh, perfect uh, morphologic recovery and therefore uh, th in this technique uh, I always pay attention to invert ILM as a smooth single layers and therefore on the second injection of the PFO after uh, ILM uh, lab creating uh, I apply because of this. Right, so Dr. Shishi Shekhar asks, uh, any proposed etiology for idiopathic macular hole if tangential traction by ILM theory is not standing in your, if you feel so? What is your proposed etiology for idiopathic macular hole? So, uh, actually, we need to discuss this all together. So, uh, you know, uh, for many years, we uh, believe that the tangential traction is significantly important in macular holes. And we need to release, uh, after ILM flap technique, we uh, always said that it's mandatory to remove all ILM to release all the tangential tractions. But after this technique, we observed that this is not really necessary. So I think the necessary things that we keep uh, we choose free medium on the macular hole area. We, we separate the macular hole space from the vitreous space. If we do this, even if there is no releasing of tangential traction, the hole is closed perfectly. So and therefore, uh, releasing tangential traction is not really necessary. But the necessary thing is that we should uh, keep all space uh, away from the vitreous space, and we should provide very silence and close area on the whole space during this field proliferation to keep the proliferation on the whole space. This is my idea. Yeah, uh, Dr. Atul, uh, any comments? Dr. Mahesh Sanugam, sir, uh, if you have any comments uh, or any anything to add with your vast experience, sir. Not, not, nothing really. I think it's been uh, a wonderful lecture as well as discussion going on. So I, as far as I'm concerned, like holes less than uh, 600 micron, I would still do a conventional technique, which works quite well. And larger than that, yes, I would do an invert flap. And if it can be a temporal flap or a 360 degree, either way, it does work. So the thing is to have a something like a scaffold across the hole, which makes the hole close. So that should be what it is. So I have no other comment. Uh, sir, have you ever tried stuffing in a uh, ILM inside the macular hole? That that is something people are using sometimes now. Stuffing in the ILM inside the macular hole in a very large macular hole. 
even larger than say 1000 microns earlier we used to do that like stuff to thing inside and the other technique like massaging the macula hole shut we have done that as well so larger holes larger than 1000 microns 1500 microns you can massage the margins to close it shut so yes it the whole process but the end of it like the visual recovery is not that too great so i don't stuff it i just like you just bridge it across and as i mentioned i would feel the ilm right up to the exact edge of the hole so that something relieves the traction all around and uh, the scaffold makes the hole close so so that's the technique which i would follow thanks uh dr ramzi uh, any specific time before you discharge the patient from the hospital or you keep the patient in the hospital till uh, say 2 3 days or is it oh. the patient is discharged immediately uh 3 to 4 hours after surgery when i sure that the first 3 4 hours is keeping we kept the patient in face down position i sent the patient in a home and uh, asked the next morning to control the eye and usually uh, but most of my patient come from another country cities uh, from lower turkey and therefore if it's out of city and i keep the patient one night in the hospital but if it lives in the same city my city i sent home immediately uh, like uh, several uh, hours after surgery uh, dr kaushik tripathi uh, sir is with us uh, any comments dr kaushik Uh, this was a very uh, very nice discussion going on. Uh, I wanted to ask, like, when we are stuffing the ILM inside the macular hole, the hole closes. There is some RP change. So, what are what are the specific uh, tips to prevent the RP change and to ensure better tobial contour and uh, better visual outcomes in very large macular holes like more than 500 or 1000 microns and to ensure that yes the hole closes so um so uh, the insertion technique uh, actually i do not apply in none of patient if it's not like that. for example uh, i apply this in one of uh, these patients as uh, it was uh, failed after second surgery it was reopen again and it was not possible to uh, keep the ilm over the macular hole and i applied this insertion technique or multilayer immersion technique but usually when ilm is go into the hole as a different uh, layers and uh, it it prevents a uh, good uh, morphologic recovery also i think uh, this may cause also rp alteration because of patching the rp during this uh, fluid air uh, during this face down position and therefore um, in in any uh, size of macular holes even in very large macular hole is better to uh, keep as a, a single layer instead of uh, insertion and stuffing of ilm into the hole yeah dr ulrich uh, you have been doing classical ilm peeling uh, all along so any tips that you can give us for a better closure rates uh, with a classical technique and second do you ever massage uh, the temporal areas for a better closure rates it, it, this question is asked by dr arifa hosain uh, is there is any role of hole of macular massage in large macular holes with a classical technique that you have to well, well if you have a very large macular hole um, then i really do a massage and i do this under air first a fluid air exchange i mean first the ilm has to be been has to be peeled completely um then i would do a fluid air exchange and do a massage under air um to close the hole goes pretty fast you can do this in a few minutes so you need then a silicone tip uh, fluid needle and you aspirate carefully the fluid from the uh, fovea if the fovea is closed you have to wait because it might happen that after a few minutes the fovea opens again then you have to have to repeat the procedure and drain against fluid from the fovea with a silicon tip fluid needle and this you have to might to do 3 4 times until the hole really closes so the whole surgery can take up to 45 minutes so then i would uh, inject c3f8 and uh, send the patient home 
um, it happens sometimes that you have to do repeat the surgery a second time. Um, but even very big, large macular holes, I can close with this technique, yes. All right. Uh, any any uh, comments on the use of air as a tamponade? Any experience with that, Dr. Ulrich and Dr. Banerjee, ma'am? Well, well I, I always use SF6. In 90%, if the hole is very large, I would use C3F8, yes. What concentration that you use uh, currently, Dr. Ulrich? 20% uh, for SF6 and 12% for SC3F8. Okay. Then, ma'am? Yeah, same. Uh, it is uh, routinely we use gas, mostly SF6, sometimes a C3F8, but I have also used air in a few cases uh, where the patient wanted an early recovery. And it, it has shown good results. So there have been no uh, failure with air, but uh, I am not so confident in using air because uh, I, I feel that probably it might not close. So SF6 works well because it has got shorter uh, tamponade. So it in between c 3 f and air. So I generally go with SF6. Uh, uh, may I ask a question, sorry. How many days do you keep face down positions in your patient after uh, SF gas injections? Dr. Ulri and uh, I keep uh, it for three days, like you do. So, but why a long uh, acting gas uh, for three days? So, if and so we can discuss this. So, uh, it was not easy for me also to uh, pass from gas to air, but when I uh, saw that air is working, and so also three days face down is uh, enough, as you. Mentioned, I keep the patient three days face down position. So, and most of the patient air tamponade uh, should be enough. Uh, mm -hmm. And therefore, I think we don't need to use long acting gas. And uh, this has uh, some complications and others also, also prevent the patient's vision uh, for several weeks. And, but air only like a day, a four days, six, five days after surgery, patients start to see it. I, 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 com I completely agree with uh, Dr. Afchi, uh, but I think the important point is the positioning. So I yeah. think if you use air and the patient is very compliant with positioning, I completely agree that air should be enough here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Dr. Maeser? Maeser? I also agree with uh, Dr. Afchi that I use air most often nowadays. And in larger holes or recurrent holes is when I would use gas. And uh, most often I would don't use C3F8, it's almost all the time SF6. But regular macular hole surgery, where we peel the ILM completely, I use only air. And some inverted flaps, I use air. So much larger holes is where I use gas. Otherwise, I would use air as well. So maybe I uh, can say that uh, some options, uh, if in large macular holes, if we apply, we apply 360 ILM peeling, I think we need to keep face down position longer than three days in large macular holes. So the duration, uh, it's uh, to uh, use gas in large macular holes, okay. But in standard case, like uh, less than 500 microns, I think air uh, should be better. But in large macular hole, uh, it's logical to use a uh, gas uh, also uh, after 360 ILM peeling. But if you use uh, inverted flap techniques or even uh, in these patients, uh, I apply air. Uh, so any any uh, hypotony that you may have noticed in a long follow-up uh, post-op day one uh, with only air? Not really, because um, so uh, as I mentioned, I use 27 gauge uh, trokers. So these are really perfectly self sealing uh, system, not like 25, not like 23s. And therefore, maybe I have no hypotonic problem, uh, problem in none of the patients. But if um, uh, we use larger uh, troker system, I used to use 23 gauge uh, the previously, and uh, in that time, I had some uh, hypotonic problem, even with gas also. Yes. So how uh, early do you do an OCT and find the macular hole closed? What period that you generally see that the macular hole averagely closes post uh, your technique, sir? So um, it'll... I, after the uh, first day, I uh, asked the patient four days after surgery to controls because in the, after three, four days or five days and half of the vitreous is uh, getting fluid and it's 
take it was it's possible to apply OCT to see the Mechner whole area. And in in almost all cases, uh, like four days after surgery, I observe the hole is closed. And if it's not closed, so it's not closed day later. But as I mentioned in my series, I have only two failed cases. Uh, it's not closed after this taking. So uh, I think the hole is closed maybe the first 24 hours after surgery, but we couldn't check this uh, in that early period. But four days after surgery, five days after surgery, in most of an old patient almost, the hole is already closed. Right. Uh, Dr. Apple, any comments? Dr. Uh, my question is how do you uh, like initiate the PIM? Like, how do you make the crescent, the initial ILM incision? Uh, uh, could you, uh, how do I start to peel ILM? I am, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Crescent, how do you make yeah. that? Okay. Um, for uh, audience also maybe it can be uh, important. I use, and everybody has used different forceps uh, to peel or sometimes find uh, uh, instruments, but I use forceps in all case, but again, I use um, ultra peel forceps is 27 gauge ultra peel forceps. It's, it's really perfectly grasp the ILM. When I catch the ILM and I uh, use this forceps, and it grasped the ILM and uh, start to peel parallel uh, to the optic uh, nerve, parallel to the macular hole area through, and, and then uh, another grasp and another, and like through three grasping of the for, uh, ILM and create uh, enough to create temporal crescent to uh, start to inverted flap technique. So maybe forceps is the most important things that, that we use to start to ILM peeling, but. I do not have experience with this finest loop on the others. I feel the discussion can go on and on on this a very beautiful topic of macular hole because it's so commonly done and everyone uh, does it. Um, either an inverted island pleading or a classical pleading or a temporal pleading. Uh, so I would like to uh, have uh, summarized this uh, topic of inverted island pleading uh, uh, it was a wonderful presentation by Dr. Ramzi Yavsi on temporal ILM peeling and his uh, experience with and what are the complications that he has come across uh, during his uh, experience. Um, at last, I would like to thank Dr. Ramzi Yavsi for sparing time and teaching all the uh, surgeons across the globe how is it done with his wonderful experience and discussions. I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Dhanushri Ratra, ma'am, Dr. Mahesh Shanmugam, sir, and Dr. Ulrich Pandu for their presence and their comments, uh, which enlightened upon the important aspects and the various ways in which uh, we really do the ILM peeling and what tips we can uh, incorporate in our technique for a better result. Dr. Atul Dhawan, uh, who has been uh, uh, organizer of this event, uh, Dr. Kaushik Tripathi, who is the academic uh, chief of ASGI hospitals. Uh, I would like every participants who have been here uh, on uh, this evening uh, for their patient listening and asking questions. Thank you, everyone, for their wonderful presence. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Thanks a lot. So it's, I really would like to thank a lot for these organizations and uh, we come together and discuss a lot of things. So I learned from uh, other uh, commons and also it was great, great uh, panels. Thank you for the organization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dhanshri Ma'am, Dr. Mahesh Mugam sir, Dr. Ulrich. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.